Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Corbett, your host today for Europa Universalis 4, and I hope you're all having a great day being World Conquerors. As you can tell from the title, today we'll be covering how to get the David the Builder achievement in EU4. On the scale of difficulty, this achievement is one compass. It only took me about one attempt, so not very difficult at all. It all depends on how you go about getting the achievement and what your future plans are. The method I went through today is the recommended path for continuing your game as Georgia after getting the achievement, so you'll have a strong economic base, multiple paths to continue, and doesn't destroy your country like other methods. Using the method I'll be showing you today, it took me around an hour and 45 minutes, but you'll be well on your path to continue your campaign from there. If you choose to use the path I'll be describing later, you can probably shave around 20 minutes off of the achievement. The David the Builder achievement requires you to start as Imereti and form Georgia then to fill out all of your provinces to the max with buildings. Fairly simple, and there are multiple ways to do it. Just remember that Imereti starts in a perilous situation where you can easily be PU'd. If that happens, just restart since it's easy to avoid again. So without further ado, let's jump into the 1444 start date. Let's start by building up to force limit with infantry since cavalry is too expensive for now. Let's also assess our diplomatic situation. Trebizond and Theodoro are the most likely to accept royal marriages and alliances, so we'll work towards getting those done. The rivals I chose aren't really the best ones, you should end up choosing nations you'll end up being at war with. For me, I should have chosen Circassia, Georgia, and Semsky. The next order of business is selling all of your transports away. They just take up maintenance and it's nice to get a little bit of money out of them since they won't be doing anything useful. Don't forget to embargo and royal marry in between sales where you can. Once you've done all of these things, start fabricating on Samsky. Of course, don't forget to manage your estates as well. You can give the burghers a province to get more influence and diplo power out of them, as well as enough money for the war you'll be starting soon. I managed to get a fairly solid general which allowed me to win a critical war later on. How skilled the general you get is will determine certain aspects later on. You can also give the clergy one province for the extra points as well. When your force limit is full, you can use your mission for extra morale a few months before you plan on declaring your first war. Samsky almost always has no allies, and with your extra money, you'll want to hire a military advisor if you can, just to make the war that much easier. The best advisor you could get would be morale, but land force limit is also acceptable. What you should have done that I forgot to do in my run is to set your mana focus to military so you can get the first military tech as soon as possible. War with Samsky should be really easy to win. Just make sure to stand in Gyuria beforehand so that they have no escape and then crush them. While you're sieging them down, get your spy network in Georgia ready for the next war. Once you've taken Samsky, it's time to turn your attention towards Georgia once you've recovered enough for the next war. Keep the extra fort you got until devastation is gone, and then just delete it. You don't want it falling into enemy hands, and it isn't worth the money you'd need to spend on it. Don't forget to keep reassessing your diplomatic scene for new potential allies now that you've grown in size. Now, a few things might happen. What happened to me is that Kara Koyonlu decided to warn me not to go to war again. This is the most important turning point of your campaign that is 100% defined by your skill as a player. QQ was weakened recently from a war in my game, so I decided to go ahead and fight them as well. If you're confident in the general you have and in your abilities, then I'd recommend ignoring Kara Koyonlu's warning and starting the war anyway. If you know your limits and you know you won't be able to beat Georgia, her ally, and QQ all by yourself, then waiting until the warning expires is probably a good idea. An option you could take is to make yourself seem weak to Georgia by deleting some of your units and waiting for them to invade you first to bypass the warning. Either way you choose, I'll show you my war against Georgia, Circassia, and Karakoyonlu.
Alright, now that you have Georgia under your belt, there are multiple ways to continue. First, core the provinces and form Georgia. My mistake was that I didn't raise autonomy, so Separatists managed to get the better of me at one point, and it took a little bit longer. Now would also be a good time to start teching up in Diplo and Admin. You also may have noticed the Renaissance has spawned by the time you have Georgia under your belt, probably. In my game, the debt and corruption I'd gotten from winning the previous war caused me to focus more on bringing all that down to save Monarch points. If this is also your case, make sure to only tech up in military where it matters the most. From here on out, it's all just teching up to get more buildings, developing the renaissance in your capital, exploiting your provinces to lower the number of buildings they can have, and building whatever will give you the most money, except there's a catch. Don't build any buildings in Giria, Lomzia, or Tau. When all your building slots are filled except for those three provinces, you can release Semsky again as your vassal, and you'll be able to get the achievement as well as continue your game as Georgia in a pretty solid state. The war I had that involved Karakoyonlu served its purpose to severely weaken them to the point where they easily succumbed to rebels and are easy to invade in the future. If you're only looking to get the achievement though, your other option is quite simple. Only build buildings in your capital, and when you're done, release Samsky and give them all the rest of your provinces. Boom! Your only province is your capital filled with buildings, and you technically got the achievement. However, your vassal will be very disloyal, so continuing the game will be nearly impossible. So that was my guide on the David the Builder achievement in EU4. If there's anything I missed or you have a few questions, comment down below and I'll do my best to answer them. If you enjoyed today's video, of course dropping a thumbs up would be super appreciated. And if you're looking forward to the next EU4 video, don't forget to hit that shiny red subscribe button and click the notification bell to get notified when it comes in. This is Corbett signing off and as always, have a fantastic day.